Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel. I'd just like to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and also say thank you to all the people who've subscribed to my channel. Now in this video we're going to be looking at a Panasonic TV where the part is no longer available and also why you cannot rely on the error codes generated by the TV to uh, indicate what board the problem's on. Right, so this is the TV in question. It's a Panasonic TX32LXD85. Uh, now this set's about 10 years old, um, which is a good thing in a way, because it means there will be a proper service manual available for it, so we can do some component level fault finding. Um, the bad news is that parts are no longer available for these TVs. Um, but first of all, I'll show you. We'll, I've got it plugged in the mains. We'll switch it on and we'll observe the error code it's flashing. So that's the standby button there. We press that. You can see the green light flashing. And it's tripped now and it's blinking. One, two, three. And then it pauses and then it blinks. One, two two three so it's generating an error code of number three so we'll have a look in the service manual now and see what that relates to right so i've printed this out from page 13 of the service manual and if we look there uh, three blinks of the red light indicates a fault on the a board now the a board is the main board uh, which Panasonic never supplied anyway. Uh, Panasonic never supplied them anyway. You had to get an exchange board from Panasonic. Send your old one in and get an exchange one back. So error code three. It says in the main board's faulty. Now I've actually checked this problem, and it's not the main board at all. It's the power supply board that's problem. Um, and the problem is there's a voltage missing on the power supply, which is supplying the A board. Um, so that's why you can't rely on these codes that's a total red herring it's not the a board that's faulty it's the p board so let's move on and take a look what the problem is right so this is where the problem lies um, we've got this chip here um, it's actually um, although it's one little hybrid package it's two completely independent switching converters um, now they've both got, uh, it's got a common voltage in, um, the 12 volt supply is there, uh, but the 9 volt supply is missing. Um, this is a little hybrid package, um, and also it has um, external inductors. So we're just going to take a quick look, there's no output there, um, but I think there's a short across here. So either this chip's faulty, or one of these two are faulty because I've unplugged the main board and the um, the short's still there. Right, so that's the chip in question. And if you can see there, I've got a meter probe on pin 9. Um, and we've got almost a dead short to ground there. So we're just going to take this board out and uh, remove them couple of uh, capacitors on the output. And then uh, we'll see what the problem is, whether it's the caps or the chip. Right, so I've checked these two capacitors here, uh, and they're not faulty, they're okay. Um, so the problem actually is inside this chip itself. Um, now that creates a little bit of a problem, because this chip is no longer available. In fact, Murata um, discontinued this chip about five years ago. So if we have a look, we've got a ground, we've got a switched on and off, which is actually disabled by taking it to ground. Um, this one here pin 10 with a couple of resistors that just sets the output voltage uh, and then we've got the external inductor here and uh, an output so really um, we don't need the on and off so you can forget that pin uh, we don't need the um, the pin that sets the ver the uh, output voltage um, so really what we need is a 24 volt in, a ground, and a 9 volt out. Um, now you can't use just a three terminal regulator um, because that would dissipate too much power. Uh, and also we need another heat sink. Um, so let's have a look. Half this chip's working, it's completely independent. You could split that down the middle um, and this side isn't working. So let's just have a quick look what we could do. 
Right, so that's the chip out, and uh, if we turn it over, you can see on the end pin where the short is, um, there's a hot spot there. Now I'm guessing that that is um, a little ceramic decoupling capacitor on the output that's shorted. Um, I'm not going to try and get into that because if it's mounted on a, a thick film substrate we could easily crack this and ruin it trying to um, get that component out. So uh, let's look at plan B. Right, so as you can see, I've cut off the last five pins and I've just left the half that's working. Um, and we're actually going to replace that with this standalone switching converter. Right, so that's the new converter fitted in. Um, that's the chip we took out there. And uh, if you can see, the converter is stood up there just behind the connector for the uh, inverter power supply um, so it doesn't actually look too much out of place um, now I've already set this for 9 volt with no load um, all that remains to do now is set it for exactly 9 volts now it's in the TV and um, there is adjustment down there which I can just get in with a screwdriver there and just tweak that there that little potentiometer so we get exactly nine volts so i'll just do that next and then uh, we'll see what happens right so here's the result let's hit the power button Can get better with age. Really? My back creaks, my knees ache. And there we go. So that is the MPD 7S002 to LM2596 DC to DC converter modification. Alright guys, everybody have a lovely Christmas and uh, I'll come back with some more videos in the new year. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.